Well, it looks like it might actually finally be here. It appears that the full self-driving beta rollout is going to go to the broader public relatively soon, and Elon Musk has actually tweeted out a whole bunch of information about it, both the good and the a little bit, I guess, stressful. Let's take a look. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. So I wanted to do a quick episode today and talk about a few tweets that Elon Musk has uh, put out since the 17th of September, which is just three days ago as I record this. It'll probably go out tomorrow on the 21st. So anyway, four days ago for you as you watch this or begin to watch this, but there are a whole bunch that were from last night, um, you know, late at night on the 19th, early in the morning on the 20th, my time. So anyway, there's a whole bunch of information here. I thought it'd be really cool to take a look at what Elon is talking about. First, however, really quickly, I wanted to point out that it appears that as one might expect, there is a huge amount of interest now in going into orbit. So apparently, you know, SpaceX, uh, who knows if they actually have a reservation list like Blue Origin and Virgin Galactic has a reservation list of people who've paid money or at least some sort of a deposit to go into space on sort of the pop gun things, right? The up and down sort of deals. I guess what do you call that? Reverse bungee jumping? I think that's what people are calling that. But anyway, the Inspiration4 mission, of course, was in orbit for, I think, 44 or 45 orbits. So they were in orbit for about three days. That's a whole different kettle of fish, as they say. And it apparently, at a guess, is somewhere around $40 million a seat to buy your way into it. So certainly nothing I'm ever going to do, unless some very rich benefactor feels like buying me a seat at some point. But that's doubtfully ever going to happen. Talk about a sugar daddy, huh? Oh boy, did I really just say that out loud? <laughs> Anyway, I just wanted to talk about that briefly. There's an Ars Technica article that was just published like moments ago as I was about to record this. And I think it's a really fascinating article. It talks about how people apparently just because all of a sudden they're like, oh, wow, this is actually really possible. And let's take a look and see what's going to happen. Apparently, interest in sales has gone through the roof. And so SpaceX actually might develop a Dragon capsule built from scratch just for space tourism, as opposed to the one that they, you know, the one that they use used in the latest one was originally designed to go to the ISS, but then they repurposed it and put in the cupola. And it had gone to the ISS before, in fact. But anyway, that's Resilience. That's the particular capsule that was named by the... Oh gosh, was it the Crew-1 mission that named it Resilience? Anyway, whoever was in the capsule first named it, so that's the name of the capsule. But anyway, it'd be really fascinating if SpaceX was able to build a, you know, from scratch version of their Dragon spacecraft. It wouldn't look all that different from any of the ones that are out there, but they could probably put in some more amenities. You know, Elon Musk Musk sort of, I guess, half jokingly tweeted that they'll have Wi-Fi from Starlink and they'll have a microwave or some way to heat up a pizza so they don't have to eat cold food in the future, which, you know, <laughs> the little amenities of, not, of life, that's nice. So anyway, I just wanted to point that out. It's very, very cool that there's interest in this. And of course, there's interest in Starship as well. And speaking of reducing the cost of launches, right, 40 million for four people to go into orbit. So that's 80, $160 million for a flight, right? Assuming that that's what people are paying. But if you could put 40 people in a Starship instead, and the Starship launch costs are supposedly going to be less than the Falcon 9 launch costs, well, then suddenly you could drop the price by at least 10 times. So you could start looking at, you know, 4 million or less to be able to go into orbit. And that would be pretty darn cool. So anyway, still well beyond what anything I can afford, but more and more people are going to be able to afford to go to space if they can get the flights down to something like that, you know, sub $10 million per flight. So anyway, something to look forward to over the next several years. It'll be at least five years before we're looking at a starship that's going to be taking people to orbit, at least not, you know, NASA astronauts or something. All right, but anyway, enough of that. I'm always geeking out on space. Let's talk about Tesla full self-driving beta 10.1 wide release. So starting early morning my time on the 17th, Elon Musk tweeted out good feedback from full self-driving beta 10 users. 10.0.1 point release rolling out now. 10.1 rolls out a week from Friday with beta request button. So of course, just that news alone was amazing. And there was some debate about which Friday we were talking about because, you know, it was right on the cusp of Friday when he tweeted that. But it appears to be that it's going to be this Friday, which is four days from when I am recording this video and maybe three days or less from when you're going to watch this video. So anyway, that's super exciting news. But of course, a bunch of questions remained with just a tweet like that. Fortunately, Elon has filled in some more of the gaps. In a tweet about six hours later, Elon said, 
Beta button will request permission to assess driving behavior using Tesla insurance calculator. If driving behavior is good for seven days, beta access will be granted. To which, of course, I had to reply something snarky. I said, uh-oh, gonna have to quit drifting and doing donuts in parking lots. So yeah, haha, -ha. aside from my sophomoric humor there, this is really interesting. So what, and this actually ties into the video I just released yesterday, so definitely check that out if you haven't yet. But basically at this point, Tesla is trying really, really hard to make sure they only have really good drivers in their beta testing program. And there's a really valid reason for this, of course. You don't want the kind of people that are, you know, <laughs> on YouTube and other viral TikTok videos and things like that, of people sleeping in their car or going into the back seat and like going, ha ha ha, look at this, right? They want really, really careful testers. And there's a multitude of reasons for this. Number one is just for human safety. It's a good idea. But I think beyond that is the fact that Tesla's being watched extremely carefully. NHTSA right now is in the middle of a big, you know, investigation of Tesla full self-driving. So Tesla just does not want to take any chances of screwing things up. So they want to make sure that they only have good, careful drivers who are accessing this beta software. Of course, the upshot of this is that we're going to have to wait at least another seven days to get the full self -driving driving beta. But you know, at this point, after waiting as long as a lot of people have, much longer than I have, I've been waiting about a year. There's people who've been waiting for, you know, three, five, et cetera, years to try to get this thing. So I think, you know, one more week is probably not the worst thing in the world. But again, there were still some questions left regarding this whole thing. So fortunately, we can fast forward a couple of days till late last night as I record this again, when Elon Musk basically tweeted out a kind of a tweet storm in response to something that Whole Mars Catalog posted. So starting with Whole Mars Catalog, tweet, he said, in the video below, the Tesla was not driven manually by a human for even one second, not even one inch. It went from parking lot to parking lot entirely on its own, controlled by software using just cameras to drive the car. Mind-blowing, isn't it? To which Elon replied, remarkable how few people realize this capability exists. Many think it is five years away. With public beta rollout in coming weeks, awareness should improve dramatically. So that's all well and good and really interesting, but then Elon continued posting in this thread, which was even more informative. Zach replied to the thread, will beta button judge your driving seven days before you press the button or seven days after and then sends it? To which Elon Musk responded, seven days after approval to log driving style. I think this point is really important and it ties into something that I've been saying on Twitter, you know, and, and also in Discord discussions, etc. And that is that Tesla anonymizes its data. I'm sure it does this for data privacy issues. Basically what that means is that if you drive a car, you're, pr you're producing a whole mass of data, whether you're using full self-driving or driving yourself. That data is being sent back to Tesla's mothership, but before it is, it's being scrambled in some way so it's not identifiable as you specifically, right? It just says geographically you're in Athens, Georgia at this time of day and you're driving and these sort of things happened, right? But it's dissociated from you. So in order to actually calculate what you as an individual are driving like, it has to have access to what Tesla already does in California for their insurance purposes. Basically, you're agreeing to allow Tesla to look at your car specifically and to examine how you drive. And if that's not a scary thought to people, I don't know what is. I think there's a lot of people who think they're really, really good drivers who may discover they're not quite as good as they thought they were, <laughs> including myself. We're gonna find out. It'll be really interesting to see what Tesla's calculator says about my specific driving ability. And I'm sure there's many other people out there who will be interested as well. And in line with that thought, Elon continued on this theme. Tesla insurance calculator will show status in real time and tell you what actions are needed to be rated good driver. And if you take a quick note down at the bottom, I said, oh, this is going to be interesting. All of us think we're above average drivers. What will it be like to confront reality? So the cool part about this is this is this is not like a test, like an SAT test where you go in and you check all the boxes and all that stuff, and then you give it to a computer and the computer then spits back a grade. You're going to interactively be told about your driving capabilities. So that will be really fascinating. You know, if you're driving and you accelerate really quickly or you start tailgating somebody or you do some stupid maneuver or something, and you know, the calculator starts going like bad driver, bad, you know, it starts, I don't know if maybe they have like a little rating. It would be really cool if they had just like a rating that was like green, yellow, red or something. And it was like, it was like good driver. And then you pull a bad move and it goes like, eh, like that. And it goes into the yellow or something. So anyway, you should be able to use these metrics to actually improve your driving, which is an interesting thing to think about. 
Uh, I'd be curious to know whether people would be interested in this feature even without the full self-driving. Like if you didn't pay for the full self-driving and you just wanted to drive yourself, this might be a way of teaching you as a human being to drive better, right? Because what it would do is show you how you could improve yourself statistically. And if anybody who lives in California and has Tesla insurance already wants to comment in the comments, I'd be curious to know whether you think that it's made you a better driver by showing you some you know, statistics and showing you places where it doesn't think you're driving driving particularly well. Another brief but very important tweet is in response to Jason Hess who says, will full self-driving subscribers be eligible for the beta? To which Elon Musk replied, yes. So anyway, that's a really interesting data point. That means that people who may have just purchased full self-driving through the subscription option are also eligible. So there's no particular time limit in terms of having to have driven the car for months or years on full self-driving prior to being eligible for this. So good for the people who are on the subscription thing, right? Continuing on with answers to questions, Tesla in the gong asked, is the Tesla insurance calculator on shadow mode the world over? To which Elon Musk said, no, has to be turned on by car owner. And again, I think this goes to the data privacy issue, right? I don't think that Tesla can be capturing this information tied to specific users in a legal sense without very explicit permission from the user. And finally, to answer one other question from Silicon Valley Club, which was, if you're on autopilot a lot, how does it calculate it? Meaning calculate your driving ability. To which Elon Musk replied, good. So for those of us who have a tendency to drive on autopilot a lot and use full self-driving a lot, that's actually really good news. <laughs> that makes me that makes me personally very happy because, you know, I do drive on the back roads and stuff where full self-driving isn't really allowed or doesn't work very well. Uh, I tend to drive myself, of course, but on major streets and on highways, certainly I use full self-driving most of the time. So, you know, fingers crossed that'll be good. So anyway, to recap, we are going to get the button hopefully sometime on Friday, so just a few days from now, when you click the button or go through some series of things or something like that, you basically sign your life away, you sign your information away to Tesla. That then will, for seven days, record your information uh, put, it, put it into the Tesla insurance calculator. Apparently you will be getting not maybe real time, but pretty close to real time feedback in terms of the quality of your driving and probably be given instructions on how to improve your driving. And then it will take that information and if you're considered a good driver, apparently you will automatically be given access to the wider beta release. Now the timing of that is not clear. That's the little bit of wiggle room that I still don't know about. It's not like, you know, you get seven days and so the Friday after that, they immediately, you know, it's like you're a good driver, you're immediately given access to the beta. I have a feeling that what they're going to do is very slowly roll it out. So you may be driving for seven days and you may be given the thumbs up in terms of your quality of driving, but then you may have to wait weeks or months or something for you to actually get the beta. It's unclear how quickly they're going to roll this out. I don't know. I mean, it's possible that on that Saturday, they may just roll it out to everybody and say, here it is. Everybody who's been given the thumbs up in terms of the driving calculator gets it automatically. But there's a really good chance that they will release it to like a thousand people and then another thousand people and another thousand people, et cetera, et cetera. So anyway, we will see. I don't know how that's going to work. And of course, that's the one major question that remains. But at least we know in the meantime that for those of us with full self-driving, whether it's subscription or whether we purchased it, and no matter how long you've been driving on that, apparently, and of course you have to own a Tesla, but you will be given the option to opt in to have Tesla look at your data for seven days, calculate whether you're a good driver or not, and then apparently if you're approved as a good driver, it will automatically put you in the queue to be able to get full self-driving beta 10.1. Or, you know, if it takes a long time, maybe it'll be 10.1. 10.2 or 10.3 by then. But we don't know exactly what that rollout time period is, but everything else seems fairly clear. And I have to say it's a very positive thing and it really goes to Tesla feeling that they have got this thing pretty well licked at this point, right? I don't think if they weren't pretty darn confident that this was working very, very well, that they wouldn't be releasing it wider right now because they're not under any real time pressure except for people like me who you know, complain about not getting it, but that's that's nothing to them, right? They're not under any real time pressure outside of themselves to make this happen. So it's a really, really good news that they feel that it's this close that they can wider release it at this point. So great job, Tesla. Super, super interested to see what it looks like. And of course, I'm super interested to drive it. Hopefully I'll be a good driver. I'm super interested to drive it as soon as the wider release comes out. 
All right, I hope you found this episode informative and thought-provoking. If you did, definitely like it so other people can find it. And of course, consider subscribing if you enjoy this kind of content. As always, a huge shout out to my patrons on Patreon. There's actually been a lot of Discord discussion on this very topic recently, so that's pretty cool. If you're interested in joining the club, of course, you can check out the link in the description and you can see how you can join. And if you're interested in some awesome merch, check out the link in the description. We've got the TeslaBot t-shirt, which is super popular these days. Don't mess with Tesla. Lots of other t-shirts t-shirts, tumblers, mugs, etc. So check out the link in the description and help the channel out. And for those of you interested in investing, check out Webull, an amazing platform for buying and selling stocks, and now cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Dogecoin, and others. Open an account and get a free stock valued at up to $200, and fund your account and get another free stock valued at up to $1,600. Check out the link in the description and help the channel at the same time. Thank you. And finally, don't forget we are both Tesla and Amazon affiliates. If you check the link in the description, you can see how at least, I guess, you know, shopping for a solar roof or a power wall, not so much a car anymore, or anything on Amazon helps out the channel. Thank you. And as always, feel free to ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time. Bye-bye.